the celestial planetary system. And for him to become an associate of the Supreme Lord would have taken millions of long years. However, because he was cursed by David Rishi, he became a crocodile. And only one life was fortunate enough to see the Supreme Personality Guide face to face and be promoted to the spiritual world to become one of the Lord's associates. Similarly, Gajendra was also delivered by the Supreme Personality Guide when he was freed from the curse of Augustia Moody. Om again, Timothy, Yanandana, Shalaya, Chakshu, and Litan Yena, Tasmai Shri Guruva. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nitana, Shri Akwaita Nalapa, Shri Vatsali Bhola Karinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. These histories in Shri Bhagavatam may make you wonder. We have two personalities who were cursed by persons whom you would consider the greatest of the great. Deva Rishi. What does our Jesus say in Bhagavad Gita? Asita Deva Yasa Swami Chaiva Bhagavishi. It's not only that I am saying that you, Krishna, are the Supreme Lord, but also Greeks. The greatest of the sadhus, like Asita, Deva Rishi, Yas. <laughs> so Arjuna is casting his lot in with these greatest of personalities. But this Deva Rishi, it seems, he caused problems. Now just think according to contemporary standards. Was King Hu Hu really doing anything that bad? What was he doing that provoked Deva Muni to curse? He was sporting in the water with young ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Every man's dream and I really not only included, but <laughs> also amongst the Gandharas. This is considered uh, Taco's pleasure to sport in sparkling fresh waters, uh, especially those waters available to the Gandharas, with young ladies. The average man would think well, that's what young ladies are meant for, that's what the water is meant for. So while sporting in this way, what happened? King Guru thought he was reaching for the leg of a beautiful young lady, and he happened to grab the leg of Deva Larishi. Mm -hmm. You gotta watch out for the water. <laughs> <laughs> Who else got in trouble with the water? Another Cooper and Money River. And they were doing activities that in Kali Yuga would be considered the essence of life. They were intoxicated and they were sporting unclad in the river. And for that, they get cursed by for pursuing activities that every colleague of man would long for. Indeed, would consider this is heaven. The question in the 10th chapter in the Krishna leader would be why did Narayana really curse them? Was he angry? Was he affected by Tomamuna? Did he have some kind of trauma from his childhood? <laughs> Perhaps some these days someone would argue that Narada Muni was feeling repressed as a Brahmacharya. And he was envious of the enjoying spirit. <laughs> as evidenced by another Cougar of my dream. So subconsciously <laughs> these complexities came out. <laughs> and he cursed another Cougar of my dream. They're doing what I really want to do. <laughs> the Monday analysis would be something like that. So, uh, Narada Muni was being compassionate. Uh, he's thinking, these are sons of Kuvera, the treasure of the heavenly planet. Look how low they have fallen. 
They're so intoxicated, they don't even care that I'm walking by. And they're leaving. Whereas the girls who were sporting with another cougar my group, they saw an arrow and they immediately tried to cover up. But the boys, the two brothers, couldn't care less. So now the me cursed them. You're so unconscious, you're so insensitive, you're so unaware of the value of your life, better you become trees. But of course, Shil Prabhupada points out this is a simultaneous cursed blessing because Narayana also gave them the benediction that you'll be freed from the tree bodies by Krishna himself. You'll get to see Krishna and be freed from this curse. So what would you say? Well, why couldn't Narayana come up with another way, right? And it makes you wonder, what's so wrong with a bit of material enjoyment? Okay, another cougar in my ear got a bit too far out there. It happens, you would say. <laughs> Things happen in this world. But remember, now I really expected, rightfully so, much higher behavior from these two boys due to their family background and due to their awareness of Vedic culture and proper standards of behavior. The question should be asked, ordinarily how long would it have taken for those two brothers to meet the Supreme Personality Guide face to face? Ordinarily it wouldn't happen. So this shows the great benefit that comes your way if some or other you cross paths with a Vaishnava. Often, the Shastra uses the Sanskrit word yajuchaya, which loosely interpreted could be could be by chance, by chance. Yajuchaya Narayuni, in his tour of universe, happened upon these two drunken brothers naked in the river with girls. But actually, uh, by Krishna's arrangement, the whole universe is full of contact points with devotees. And just by coming in contact with a devotee, your sojourn through material existence can come to an end. So it's not by chance that Krishna has devotees everywhere. That is Krishna's plan. But from our point of view, it may seem to be by chance that you come across a devotee. But actually, that's the purpose of the universe, the highest purpose of the universe. The lower purpose of the universe is that you get to act on your material desires and see the results. You become frustrated. What kind of world is this? Every time you read about or hear about a tragedy somewhere in the world, it makes you wonder the ferry that capsized off of South Korea. And so many school children. Who knows what is their fate? Most likely hundreds are lost. And just think, these school children were on their way for a holiday trip. They're not thinking they're going to die. And you think they're just innocent school children. Yeah. Yet, by the hundreds, uh, they're lost. So that makes you think, what kind of world this is? If you are atheistic, you'll use such incidents to declare just see, How can you say there's a God? How can a God allow such injustices to happen to innocent school children? Or else, as one prominent loud loud atheist would say, even if there is a God, which there isn't, but if there is a God, he better get some education how to run the world. Huh? <laughs> he better get it together. He obviously doesn't know what he's doing. And such things happen in the world. So, we may have some twinges of even resentment subconsciously that <coughs> why such a severe punishment for another guru or mommy guru? But then our concerns are resolved because 
They get to see Damodar Leela. They get to participate in Damodar Leela. Now, what was Damodar Krishna thinking as he approached the Yamalarjan trees? He, he was thinking to himself, the Acharya point out, that I've got no business dealing with these demigod boys in the bodies of trees. <laughs> I've got no business uh, with the affairs of the heavenly planets, the sons of Kubera and their celestial life and sensual education. I got nothing to do with that. But my devotee, my bhakta, Narada Muni, has said, given them the benediction, that I'll free them from the tree bodies. So, subservient to Narada Muni, my pure devotee's desire, I'll do it. I'll free them. Otherwise, on my own, I got nothing to do with this. <laughs> so, this shows the power of the devotee, which is not by chance, it is according to Krishna's arrangement. So Yadishtaya doesn't mean just random interaction, as perhaps some scientists would interpret the functioning of the universe. It seems to be causeless, but there is a cause. When we say causeless mercy, it means there's no apparent cause. But, of course, Krishna is Sagar, Karna, Karna, the cause of everything. Now, leaving aside, Malakubra and Mangriva, we look at the situation of King Bhu, a Gandharva, life on Gandharva, you know, singing, dancing, artistry. <laughs> the music, the dance, the artistic expression on the earth planet is so paltry and so scarred compared to the artistic the artistry of Gandharva Loka. So, here we see Gandharva Sattava. Not only a Gandharva, but the best of the Gandharvas, Kepu. How did he turn out to be the best? Through being cursed. So, as you heard, he was sporting in the waters with young girls, and he thought to grab one of their Gorgeous legs, temporarily gorgeous. When they're old ladies, you know what When I was a little kid, I had an interesting hobby of collecting photos of old movie stars <laughs> and comparing photos to when they were young, you know, when they were in the peak of their star. Quite good deal. <laughs> These stunning beauties when they're in their 20s and 30s. Uh, and then you look at them when they're in their 60s and 70s. But obviously, uh, King Wu wasn't thinking like that. He was overwhelmed by the circumstances. That's the nature of material life. You get overwhelmed. Your intelligence becomes uh, overpowered. So he grabbed the light of David Orishi. And David Orishi cursed him. You like to grab legs in the water? Better you be a crocodile. <laughs> and crocodiles are always trying to snap their jaws on something in the water. So an appropriate form of life for you is crocodile. But King Wu, as a crocodile, received the mercy of the Supreme Personality of God. The Sudashan Chakra of the Supreme Lord severed his mouth so that a gender elephant could pull his leg out. That means that who, as a crocodile, came in personal contact with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He could see the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the chakra of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, finished off his crocodile body, and he appeared as a good dog. So Prabhupada explains in the purport, the Gandharva had the mentality of an inhabitant of the celestial planetary system. And for him to become an associate of the Supreme Lord would have taken millions of long years. However, because he was cursed by Deva Rishi, he became a crocodile, and in only one life was fortunate enough to see the Supreme Personality of God face to face and 
be promoted to the spiritual world to become one of the Lord's associates. So Shula Prabhupada is telling us that it's not that simply Guru returned to his Gandharva life. No, he also went back to Godhead. So what do we say about this? We might be thinking, couldn't there be a better way? <laughs> and when something happens to us, when we go through some choppy seas in the material world, we always say, Krishna, could, can't things happen in a better way? But a devotee is one who has learned the art of how to use so-called unfavorable circumstances to his or her bhakti advantage. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sajatakura said that actually for a devotee there are no unfavorable moments because at one moment something looks unfavorable but because of the skill of the devotee the next moment it becomes most favorable. So we have to look at the whole picture in terms of the bhakti result. And because we are attached to material life we have difficulty doing it. We want to enjoy this material world. So we question subconsciously, why did it have to happen like that? Could there be another way to produce my bhakti advancement than by having to deal with the complexities, the issues, the bumpy roads in the material world? And indeed, those material setbacks, those material problems can be daunting. What was Vista Day's reaction upon leaving, getting ready to leave this world and seeing his beloved Pandavas, seeing Kunti Day? His eyes were filled with tears, thinking of all the suffering they went through. So it's not that the Vaishnava is just callous to the difficulties that the Vandis go through in the material world. So we just say, anyway, it's all Krishna's word. Mercy, don't worry about it. <laughs> We're not going to worry about you. No, he's the, he's the greatest warrior, yet he's affected thinking about what the Pandavas went through, all their ordeals. How could this happen? He said, look at who's present amidst all these ordeals. You had Yudhisthira, who's Dharma personified. You have Bhima, the famous fighter with the club. You've got Arjuna with his bow. And Draupadi. She's practically the goddess of fortune. Yet they went through so many ordeals. Bhishma just concluded, we just have to accept the inconceivable plan of the Supreme Personality of God. Here. Just think, what would you want? To go through millions of years as a Gandharva with the mentality of a heavenly planet enjoyer? Or in just one lifetime become a crocodile who's favored by the Supreme Personality of God? What would we take? We say, well, how about millions of years as a Gandharva and then go back to that? <laughs> fight back. Why is it either or? Why can't we have it all? Why does a Krishna do it in this way? I enjoy the material world and I get to see Krishna do it. So here we have the patient prescribing the medicine. The patient telling the doctor here's the medicine I like for you. As if the patient knows the best. So when Krishna says Sarva Dharma Krishna Ma Me Kam Shabhuja as we were explaining the Sunday program this evening he, he means you shut down your plan making factory and you accept his plan as the best so that's the resistance that we have no, what about my plan I think Krishna is a better way to deal with me <laughs> I'm here to tell you <laughs> how to deal with me I know <laughs> Just look at my track record. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we feel a little mm, rattled when we hear things like Bengal or Rishi cursing. Mm. He was doing all 
right, race to the heavenly planet, he would have become a devotee in time. Uh, what's a few million years, especially on the heavenly planet? <laughs> but the more we are aware of the glories of the spiritual world, the more we understand that even the heavenly planets, uh, in the slightest, they cannot compare to life in the spiritual world of Krishna. Krishna wants the best. He wants us to return to him. We've got to fix that in our mind. Otherwise, we'll get bewildered by the events of evils of the material world. What about Gajendra? He, that, that could be even more problematic. Who was Gajendra in his previous life? He was King Indraguna. And what was he doing? He wasn't sporting in the river with young girls. <laughs> How did he get cursed? He had left his kingdom and he was performing yoga, meditation. He was a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And while he was meditating, in Samadhi, Augusta Muni comes along with his disciples. Another extraordinary style. And Indra doesn't react. He's in yogic trance. But Agastya Muni doesn't believe it. <laughs> what is this? I don't even get a reception from this king? <laughs> is this king so undevotional and so callous? He doesn't greet me? So Agastya Muni cursed Indra Duna that since you're so dull, since you're so insensitive, you will take birth as an elephant. Now you get your mind around this one. King Indraguna was meditating on the Supreme Lord. He was fixed in his meditation. But he got cursed. Isn't this unfair? Isn't this unjust? Who's the justice minister in the cosmos? <laughs> Who do you call <laughs> when this happens? Uh, but just me. Indigenous took birth as the gender. He was an elephant, but he was personally freed by the Supreme Personality of God, who touched him, pulled him from behind, pulled him out of the water, and then the Lord severed the mouth of the crocodile. By that touch and darshan of the Supreme Personality Godhead, Indraguna, as Gajendra the Elephant, went back to Godhead. So you might say, okay, okay, we accept the outcome, but just the way things happen, it's not just, it's not the American way. <laughs> There's the truth, the justice, the brotherhood, the uh, one man, one vote. And, uh, it's not, not happening that way. He gets cursed for being in meditation on the Supreme Person that he got there. And he takes birth as an elephant. But you see, to go back to Godhead in one lifetime, uh, that is very special. And we shouldn't take that for granted. Our opportunity in this lifetime to go back to God. Even though we're living in the most degraded times, <clears throat> we can actually finish up our business in this lifetime. The Supreme Personality of God has made approach to Him so easy in this worst age. That's why Bhagavatam says that great saints and sages worship Kali Yuga because amidst all the degradation of this age, you can easily go back to God simply by chanting Hare Krishna. So we need to, in order to appreciate the history of King Guru and King Indraguna, we need to understand that generally they, in those previous ages, you don't go back to God after one lifetime of spiritual practice. We're taking all that for granted. 
In other words, we have special mercy available to us in spite of the darkness of the current age. Normally it takes many births. As Prabhupada explained about the Gandharva Hulu. For him to become an associate of the Supreme Lord would have taken millions of long years. And even Indra Gurdwar, who was, who was in Samadhi, still, the normal procedure would have been several births before entering the spiritual world. But Augusta Moody actually accelerated King Indra return to the spiritual world. Let's consider <clears throat> Pritchett Maharaj. <clears throat> he was going to the forest as a chapter. He was practicing the killing arts by hunting him. And he came upon the hut of Shami Karishi, some other Pritchett Maharaj who could endure the heat of the Brahmastra in the womb of his mother, Uttara. Some other he became thirsty, overwhelmed by thirst. And he entered the hut of Swami Karishi. And there's no reaction. No sweet words, no straw mat, no drink of water. These are things that, of course, a person can offer. But there's nothing. So, the first extraordinary thing is that Richard Maharaj was overwhelmed by thirst. The second extraordinary thing is that he became angry. That person, young boys, made a curse that the king would die in seven days. And Srila Prabhupada points out that this young Brahmana boy, Sri, was powerful because of his father and also because of the good government of Prince Maharaj. By Prince Maharaj's social organization, there was an opportunity for a young boy to become such a powerful Brahmana that he had the potency of curse. So, what to make of all this? The proper vision, as the Bhagavatam explains, is to see that this is Krishna's plan to bring Bridget back to Godhead. Krishna wanted Bridget Maharaj in his association. He was pulling him out of all the affairs of managing the world. So again, you say, well, that's the reward I get for being a faithful servant of the Lord. I get cursed by a Brahmana boy to die in seven days just because Krishna wants me to be him. <laughs> <laughs> again, isn't there a better way, Krishna, to deal with us? But just think, implicit in our protest is the thought that this material world is meant for our enjoyment. Krishna, let us stay in the material as long as possible, make it good for us, make it nice. <laughs> Maybe not quite young girls in the river, but something like that. <laughs> we don't believe Krishna, and he says in the Bhagavad Gita, to Kali or Shapsukam, this material is a visible place, and it jumps to Kum Logam, it's temporary, unhappy. We don't really believe that. So subconsciously, we're thinking, that the blessings of the Lord should be there to make this world a nice place. But Krishna, as the all-knowing Supreme Father, knows what is best for his children. You want to get out of the material world as quick as possible. So he made this arrangement for Pritchard Maharaj. And by that arrangement of Pritchard Maharaj leaving the world in seven days, Srimad Bhagavatam had a chance to be spoken. Just as by Arjuna's becoming overwhelmed by Maya, Bhagavad Gita had an opportunity to be spoken. So these are all the plans of the Supreme Personality of God, but we'll never understand them if we remain attached to material enjoyment and the material world. Because the first thing that comes to our mind, either loudly or softly, is I don't want to leave this world. I want a happy life. I want good times. But Krishna knows what is superior existence. As devotees, we should use our spot of life to sample that 
superior system <coughs> by immersing in devotional service, by immersing in hearing and chanting about Krishna. Otherwise, we're sure to be bewildered. Because sooner or later, the material world shows its ugly realities. Ugly, that is, for what on the material platform. But as Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Sajitapur says, for a real devotee, there's nothing unfavorable. Because at one moment, things look unfavorable, circumstances look unfavorable. The next moment, they become an opportunity for spiritual victory. So therefore, the Bhagavatam is teaching us how to be a real devotee, how to use even material setbacks, discomforts, reversals, how to use those as accelerators in love of Krishna. So that's why we say the bhakti art, science, and culture is topmost. Even what ordinarily appears to be a setback, whether a curse by a powerful sadhu or disease or even death can be used to accelerate our immersion in love with Krishna. Krishna knows what is a superior reality. You see, there's no such thing as a nice death from the material point of view. You may think, oh, to die in a plane crash, to die in a car accident, how horrible. But to die peacefully in your sleep, oh, that's a good death. <laughs> No, you don't see what's going on on the inside. <laughs> There's no nice death from the material point of view. But from the spiritual point of view, the best death, regardless of the circumstances, is when uh, your mind is fixed on remembering the Supreme Personality of God, who is so merciful that as Prophet explains in one purport of Bhagavatam, if the faithful devotee who has served Krishna all his or her life at the time of death, happens to have the mind and body in disarray and can't focus. Krishna is so merciful that he can choose to force himself into the mind of his dedicated devotee. I was, one last point. I was hearing about the departure several years ago, if two or three years ago, I'm a god brother, uh, baby. So I was from when I got her from, from Chicago. I don't know if you might remember him. Uh, Ron Taylor. Uh, <clears throat> one would say, looking at his devotee years, one could one say he had a tough time. He was kind of argumentative and always getting into spats with devotees and he must have come to Krishna conscious at a young age. And he wasn't an educated devotee. He wasn't suave. So he had his ups and downs. So Shikimati uh, Prabhu was telling me about this because Shikimati Prabhu became Ram Kennedy's caregiver when it was when medically it was ascertained that he was terminally ill. And Prior to that terminal illness striking, the Prabhu's sadhana wasn't the best. It was a bit rocky. Uh, but anyway, with the help of the devotees at New Talaban, where he went to leave his body, he focused. And the day he, the day that it was established, he was departing. Uh, the nurse said he's going today. It was Bhakti Vinodak for his appearance day. So he's laying in bed. I heard this directly from Shikha Bhikkhu, who was his character. Ram Kedra was laying in bed. It's Bhakti Vinodak for his appearance day. He's about to leave this world. And all of a sudden, he stands up in the bed and starts walking. Bhakti Vinod! Bhakti Vinod! Bhakti Vinod! And then just collapses in the bed. And a year later, uh, uh, an hour later, leaves his body while the devotees are chanting. <laughs> Krishna's independent. Now that's, this is not an invitation to slack over your side that bit.
extraordinary attention from Krishna. We, we don't know what that Prabhu did to Sankarla. So have his sincerity noted. We don't know. Externally look a bit rough. We don't know all the time what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. So therefore, let us take it very seriously when Shul Prabhupada says, we have every opportunity to finish up our business in this lifetime and go back to God. Thank you very much. Yeah. 